evening and happy new year everyone welcome to the january 10th 2017 meeting of the Dinersville village council you were just treated to our brand new 2017 introductory video and uh wow it is terrific well done well done So new year, new beginnings, new opportunities, new challenges. Uh, welcome to the 2017 Village Council meeting, as I mentioned, first one of the year. Um, if you haven't already done so, please feel free to pick up a copy of our agenda. There are copies on either side of the room, plenty of agendas to go around. There will be multiple opportunities for public comment during the course of our meeting, both with respect to the items that are on tonight's agenda, as well as a segment under item four, which is reserved for public comment of a general nature. At that point in time, any members of the audience who wish to raise any questions or make any comments of a general nature, protocol is to please come on the podium, tell us who you are, and we would welcome hearing from you. But first, it is our proud custom to begin our meetings by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, so I ask everyone present to please stand and join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And for the first time in 2017, I'd like to ask our fine village clerk, April Holden, to please call the roll. Commissioner Wallace? Here. Commissioner Earl? Here. Commissioner Waldeck? Here. Commissioner White? Here. Commissioner Jose? Commissioner Barnett? Here. Mayor Tully? Here. Thank you very much. That brings us to item three, minutes of prior council meetings. We have one set of minutes to approve from oh so long ago on December 20th, 2016. And if there are no changes, corrections, or comments to those minutes, I will entertain a motion to approve. Mayor Tully, I move that this council approve the minutes of December 20th, 2016 as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Now, item um, 3A, we have a surprise proclamation. It occurred to us that uh, we will not meet between now and Martin Luther King Day. And far be it from us to uh, miss out on an opportunity to have a proclamation recognizing Martin Luther King Day. And thank you to our fine village clerk for uh, the prescience of mine to, to think of that. And I have said proclamation. Uh, so in advance of Martin Luther King Day, whereas Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his life to civil rights and public service, and whereas January 16, 2017 marks the observance of the federal legal holiday established by Public Law 94-144 to honor the birthday of Dr. King. And whereas Dr. King recognized that everybody can be great because everybody can serve. And during his lifetime encouraged all Americans to serve their neighbors and their communities. And whereas this day is not only for remembrance and celebration, but for a day of service to strengthen communities and empower individuals by focusing on bringing people together and breaking down the barriers that have divided us as a nation. Whereas thousands of Illinois residents use Martin Luther King Day by performing community service that benefits communities and neighborhoods and provides a fitting memorial to the life and teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now, therefore, I, Martin T. Tully, Mayor of the Village of Downers Grove, do hereby proclaim January 16th, 2017 as Martin Luther King Day in the Village of Downers Grove and recognize it as a day of service throughout Illinois. And I just want to add one of my favorite quotes from Dr. King, which is as applicable as it is poignant today as it ever was before. And uh, it goes as follows. We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. And with that, uh, we will move on to item four, which as mentioned earlier, is reserved for public comment of a general nature. If there are any members of the audience who have any questions or comments of a general nature, now is the time. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm uh, Rich Culavaney, 6825 uh, Camden, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, staff. Uh, just uh, wanted to let you know that we've been working with Landmarks Illinois, Chicago, uh, Chicago Suburban <coughs> Preservation Alliance on their March 11th meeting. Uh, this group is a, a group of suburban municipalities that meets three times a year and uh, to bring people who are interested in historic preservation. Downers Grove has been given the honor of hosting this meeting on March 11th. And uh, so we have some more of the details and we'll be forwarding these uh, more. We're working uh, along with uh, Stan Popovich and Rebecca Lightshoe on staff uh, on the program. But it's gonna be held at Avery Cooley School, which is the only uh, uh, site that's on the National Historic Register. So we're really pleased about that. Uh, the meeting should start about 10.30 and we'll have kind of a general meeting. Uh, break for lunch and then have a tour, tour of uh, Avery Coonley. And then after lunch, there'll be a presentation on the tax incentives that are available, both
both for homeowners with the eight year full freeze and the years nine through 12 uh, graduated uh, freeze, and then also the federal investment tax credit that's available for uh, commercial properties that, uh, that renovate their properties. So it's something that we're excited about it. Uh, it's a great honor, and the reason they picked us is they're very excited about the voluntary landmark thing, the landmarking that we've been doing in the village. So we're, uh, we're actually getting recognized around the state for those efforts. Terrific. Thank, Thank you, you very much for sharing us, and thanks for um, putting us on the map in that respect. And I look forward to that meeting. It should be a, a terrific event. Uh, we've had the opportunity to work with uh, that organization from time to time over the years, and uh, very glad to see them choosing our community as a place to hold their upcoming upcoming meetings. Thank you for sharing that and your involvement to facilitate it happening. Any other questions or comments of a general nature from members of the audience? Hearing that there are none, thanks for the comments that we've had. That'll take us to item five, which is our consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? Mayor Tully, I move that this council will approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Questions or comments from any members of the audience with respect to any of the items on tonight's consent agenda? Questions or comments from members of the Village Council? Hearing none, roll call please. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. The consent agenda passes unanimously. It brings us to item six, our active agenda. We have no items on tonight's active agenda, but don't expect that to last very long as we head down the road into 2017. So we'll move to item seven, our first reading on our workshop agenda. This is an opportunity for items to be presented to the council and the public for consideration and discussion purpose only. No formal action will be taken at this time, as is customary. Uh, for the first time in 2017, I will ask our village manager, David Fieldman, to lead the introduction of these two items. Good evening and Happy New Year. Good evening, Mayor. Happy New Year to you and the council. Thank you so much. Only two items on tonight's first reading agenda. The first is an ordinance which would amend citation provisions for ordinance violations. And here to explain what that actually means is our village attorney, Enza Petrarca. Thank you, Dave. This ordinance amends section 1.16 of the Downers Grove Municipal Code. This section actually um, allows the officer's discretion to write a ticket on the scene of an incident as opposed through processing an offender through the formal booking process and the court system. The amendment updates both the fine structure and adds a few additional violations to this section. For example, it adds the possession of less than 10 grams of cannabis to this section in response to this recent state law amendment classifying this offense as a civil violation as opposed to a misdemeanor and capping the fines to $200. Um, I'd also like to note that by adding these sections to this section 1.16, it does not preclude the officers from formally booking and processing any offender that they deem appropriate. Um, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any specific questions you may have here. Thank you, Madam Attorney, and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Questions from the Council? Commissioner Waldack, good evening. Just a uh, quick comment. Uh, Mayor, in our last meeting, you commented on the use of the word abate. And if you read through all these citations, you'll see multiple uses of the word abate. <laughs> so it's not just during tax time. Thank you. Thank you. It could be a tagline in there somewhere. It's not <laughs> just for tax time. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from members of the council? <coughs> questions or comments from members of the audience? Very well. Thank you. Next item, please. The next item is an ordinance classifying certain fire investigators as peace officers. This ordinance, if approved by the council, would allow certain identified and properly trained firefighters to serve as arson investigators. Uh, which requires the official designation as peace officers under this ordinance. Happy to answer any questions that the council may have on this item. Thank you. Questions or comments from the council? It's very straightforward. Thank you, Commissioner White. <laughs> <laughs> questions or comments from the audience? Not controversial. <laughs> and that ends our first reading tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you very much. Very succinct. Uh, that brings us to item eight, the mayor's report. I do have uh, a couple things that I want to, actually three things that are all related that I want to share with the council that all pertain to DuPage County Stormwater Management Planning Committee. Um, as uh, you'll recall from time to time, I try to update everyone on what's going on at the county with respect to stormwater management and three things of interest there. Uh, first and foremost, I have reported out previously, I think maybe a month or so ago, that the ongoing uh, project by uh, DuPage County Stormwater Management staff, as well as the, the committee, uh, was looking at a stormwater program assessment. This was a 
program that was the result of engaging numerous stakeholders over a long period of time in terms of what would be the, if we were to put it in Downers Grove terms, the long range strategic plan for stormwater at the county level. Uh, more of an idea of where we would like to be in the county, not necessarily that we're going to pay for it, but if we could wave a magic wand, what we would like to do uh, within reasonable parameters. And uh, there were three different levels that were put together with respect to key uh, elements of the program, such as water quality, watershed management, uh, floodplain mapping, regulatory services, operations and maintenance were the, the key uh, elements of the program. And uh, each one was put into different levels. There was a level one, level two, level three. Um, level three was what was called the, the Cadillac plan. Uh, level two was the Chevy plan. And I guess uh, without disparaging anyone, level one was the Hyundai plan. And uh, the committee, after much discussion and input from a variety of stakeholders, ended up recommending the level two, the Chevrolet, the Chevy plan for all of those elements with one exception, and that was water quality. Water quality was recommended to be at the, at the higher level uh, due to uh, requirements of phase two of the Clean Water Act and uh, the idea that the county ought to continue to assist municipalities in meeting the six minimum control measures under their NPDES permit requirements. And I know I'm telling you more than I would ever thought I would know about this, um, which actually is very beneficial for us because if communities had to actually provide for those six minimum control measures, or even the three by ourselves, uh, number one, a lot of communities would not even be able to do it and would end up falling in trouble with the feds in the state, which enforces this. Uh, but also it would cost us a great deal more. Uh, so this was something that was to, viewed to be very uh, beneficial to municipalities and our shared taxpayer constituents. And so that was a recommendation. Now, all this means is that this was sort of the plan that was recommended for final action by the county. What funding actually takes place or how many of this is done, that's another story. So it's somewhat similar to um, our, our so do we still call it the watershed improvement plan or am I really that old? <laughs> it's been replaced with the stormwater project analysis. Thank you. Stormwater project analysis. We went from a whip to a spa. Correct. <laughs> Very good. Um, that uh, you have a program in place so that if a project, for example, for whatever reason that was budgeted and planned for couldn't take place in the fiscal period, you wouldn't have to figure out, well, what should we do instead? You already have a plan outlined what, what you would do and where those funds would go. And obviously, if other opportunities came forward, such as grants, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so the financial part of it, because everyone then asked me, well, OK, now what's the county going to do to pay for all this? That was not any recommendation that was made by this committee. Uh, that is the next, that's an, I, I, we, may, we may be asked about that, but we haven't been asked about that. Uh, that's all in the county's hands right now. But I just want to report that out to everyone, and I think uh, staff previously shared the summary document with you before. All that was done was the formal vote was taking place, and the consensus was level two, with the exception of water quality, which was at the which was at level three. Two other quick things. Uh, one, I think for I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Real quick. Sorry, Commissioner. By all means, please. Uh, well, I'm glad you brought up the fact that they haven't brought up uh, revenue yet, although it's pretty much known that. We're going to be heading into a county stormwater fee. I can see it coming, but uh, on the on the expense side, uh, we have we're we're going to have a new administration in Washington. We've always complained about unfunded mandates. I think uh, uh, we should be careful on what what projects and priorities we're doing, especially with the new administration that may not be. Uh, uh, may not have a lot of mandates, may not be doing a lot of enforcement. There may be a lot of changes there. And I think that should be considered when, uh, when prioritizing projects. Uh, just a thought there, because I see changes coming, whether we like them or not. Fair point, and I think it would be wise for us to keep an eye out on that. Mm -hmm. um, and as things change, then I think we need to be nimble enough and prepared enough to adjust accordingly. Um, until those changes are made, though, we still have to be mindful of uh, violations and enforcement issues. Uh, a quick, quick, quick story. Um, I remember being in federal court on a matter a while ago, and there was a defendant who was called up to the bench for marijuana possession. And the judge reminded the defendant that at that time it was still illegal in the state of Illinois, and so therefore the punishment would still go forward under the existing law. The fact that it was scheduled to be decriminalized didn't change a thing. 
Uh, so you're right, I think we need to be mindful of those things, uh, but until they actually change, we, we have little choice but to actually make sure that we're complying with federal and state law. Right? Other questions? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to move on. I was just trying to be okay. swift. Uh, I've also been reporting out for some time about the progress the county is making with respect to the floodplain mapping update. And I'll be very quick about that. It's still going on. And without, I'll spare you the details and just let you know that the revised preliminary map is now scheduled to be released in June of 2017. Although I think I said that in June of 2016. On it goes. And then last, just an interesting point is, speaking of compliance with federal law, uh, DuPage County itself is apparently due to be audited by state and federal authorities for its own NPDES uh, compliance within a couple of months. Um, and they weren't quite sure when that was gonna be. Uh, NPDES, if I remember correctly, is National Discharge Permit something, I forget what the ES stands for. That's right, NPDES. Um, so I don't know what impact that's going to be. Um, and they, in, in turn, are uh, looking, doing some, some audits themselves. They've commenced their own community audit program. They identified a number of communities that they will be auditing soon. Uh, Village of Glendale Heights is one. Uh, I believe City of Elmhurst is another one. Uh, just, just heads up that that's something that's in progress as they move through DuPage County. Speaking of being prepared, not that we have anything to worry about, but just a little heads up. Any questions on any of that? Otherwise, that's all I have for the world of stormwater. Terrific. Then we'll go right back to uh, item nine, which is uh, the manager report. Back to Mr. Fieldman. Thank you, Mayor Kelly. Just one quick note. We just acknowledged the great work uh, that was shown in the what we call the Pride video, which is our intro video. I just want to personally thank the uh, folks that put that together, uh, Doug Kozlowski, Chris Durlo, and all the people that you saw in the video doing their work, participated in the making of that video. I think they did a superb job, so I just wanted to personally thank them for their work. That is all tonight. Thank you. Likewise. Likewise. Excellent. Excellent work product. Thank you. That brings us to item 10. Madam Attorney, good evening again. Ms. Petrarca. Thank you, Mayor. Only two items to present tonight. The first is an ordinance amending citation provisions for ordinance violations. And the second is an ordinance classifying certain fire investigators as peace officers in the village of Donna. That is all. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Appreciate that. That will bring us to item 11, council member reports. Um, this is an opportunity for members of the village council to share with uh, their fellow colleagues in the village council and members of the public any items of interest or goings on in the community as well as any reports in their capacity as liaisons to other bodies which is a topic we'll be talking about in our upcoming governance retreat later this month i'll start with uh, commissioner Waldeck tonight commissioner happy new year happy new year to you happy new year at all and no report thank you commissioner wallace happy new year happy new year just a happy new year to everyone out there no report Mayor. thank you commissioner barnett happy new year to you no report mayor Thank you. Commissioner Earl, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Mayor, um, and everyone, no report. Thank you. And Commissioner White, Happy New Year as well. well. Happy New Year as well, and I do have a brief report. As many people know, I'm involved in a local nonprofit known as DG Frog, and enrollment for the spring set, Super Saturday classes has opened. The classes will begin January 28th at, at, at O'Neill Middle School. A few highlights, we're gonna launch another balloon, another high-altitude high balloon, hopefully we'll go 100 miles again. Um, then we'll be doing a quad rotor class, a new class uh, will be on flower decorating, also the ever popular cupcake decorating, which is always massively oversubscribed. Um, <laughs> that's like the most popular class that, 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 that they seem to have. And we'll be having another speaker probably in early February and maybe next week I'll have more, more details about that. But go to dgfrog.org because there's a whole lot of great classes on Saturday morning starting in a few weeks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, two quick final things. One, I'm sure some of you have been following bits and pieces in the press of what's been going on in the lame duck session in uh, Springfield. Uh, there's been a lot of wild and crazy things happening or not happening as the case may be. Uh, something that we've been keeping our eyes on both directly and through our membership and other organizations such as the Illinois Municipal League, the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus and DuPage Mayors and Managers Conference. Uh, and obviously anything that comes out of that that is significant, we will we'll let you know But there's been some fast and furious activities going on. Uh, some rumors of a potential budget uh, compromise, we'll see. Uh, what that would look like, don't know, but uh, things are moving fast and furious. I think they're still in session for a little bit, so 
hang on to your seats. We'll see what happens. And the last thing, just very importantly, I, I want to go on record and dispel the rumors. It is not true. Donner's Grove is not, in fact, seeking to annex in Westmont, Oak Brook, and Lombard. Uh, just so everyone knows that, we are, we are not doing that. Uh, but with that, I will ask for a uh, motion to adjourn. Martelli, I move that we adjourn. Second. Very good. Roll call, please. Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Waldeck. Aye. Commissioner Wallace. Aye. Commissioner Burrell. Aye. Commissioner Burnett. Aye. Mayor Tully. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good night and Happy New Year.